patient. I got one foot in the future and one foot in the past. Grab yourself a pound cone and bounce it off my ass. Hey, my name is Dave. Welcome to the motherfucking show. It should maybe last, I don't know, I think 30 minutes or so. I'm a caveman. Caveman in a spaceship. I'm a caveman. Spaceship, break it down now. when that opening number didn't go nearly as smoothly. Dave, Dave. There you go. Oh, I just gotta... Just keep... Just keep it going. Just keep it going. Take that, everyone, from high school. All right. Oh, I forgot to hit play. Anyway, it's really great to be back in Nottingham. Woo! The Paris of the East Midlands, this portion of the East Midlands. Beautiful this time of year. For those of you who've been following my career from the very beginning, thank you. It's my first time back in Nottingham in about five or six years, mostly for legal reasons. <laughs> so I wanted to come out here tonight with guns blazing like a motherfucker. <laughs> so I thought at this point I'd play a little guitar. Clap along. What do you got? 
made it up, uh, 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 Thank you. Can't stop me. Wonder why. Well, two days and a th Thank you. Van Halen. I gotta give this thing a minute to cool off. I gotta keep things moving. I wanna leave time for the Q and A. Does anyone, anyone have any questions so far? Where'd I get this jumpsuit? Your mom's house. Mm, too easy. It is really great to be here in Nottingham. Nottingham, it's, I love it so much. I love all the beautiful landscapes and the sex. But if I had to pick a third thing. I love about it. I've been I've been hanging out. Been hanging, hanging out in Poundland a lot lately. In fact, depending on how things go to here tonight and the rest of the spicy meatball tour, I may very well end up working at Poundland when this is all over. Thank you, thank you. Not necessarily out on the floor as you might expect, but I sort of anticipate working at Poundland in a more of a behind the scenes capacity. Specifically, yeah, shut the fuck up or I'll stab you. I said specifically in the advertising department. In fact, I wasn't even gonna bring this up, but I actually have a, a, a meeting, child interview, something, whatever you wanna call it, uh, tomorrow morning at the regional offices of Poundland right here in Nottingham. They have no idea I'm coming, but I'm just gonna fucking roll up there. And uh, it's all right with you guys. I, I wanted to run some of my sample ad slogans that I'm gonna have used in my meeting tomorrow. Uh, I don't even know if you guys want to hear them. All right, I'll do it. I'll do it. All right, these are my sample Poundland ad slogans. Poundland, if you give up, we give up. Poundland, take all the time you need. We all know, there, know there's no one waiting for you to get back home. Poundland, fuck it. Poundland, we all die a little bit at Poundland. Poundland, what the hell are you looking at? Fuck a piece of shit and get the hell out. Poundland, I think I just shit my pants. Poundland, oh great, I'm having another stroke. Poundland, look, there's James Corden. Poundland, we sell everything but dignity. Poundland, if you can fit it down your pants, it's yours. Poundland, what happens in the employee toilet stays in the employee toilet. At Poundland, Poundland, does this look infected? Poundland. That's not my crystal meth. Poundland, I just got a hand job at Poundland. Poundland, stop pretending and just get inside when no one can hurt you anymore. Poundland, fuck you. Thank you. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Thank you. Dave, Dave, Dave. All right. All right, that's enough. Save some for later. Save some. Some of you know this about me, but I'm a. Uh, what? What is some of this? I've seen Carl from Lester one show. <laughs> some of you know this about me, but I'm a hopeless romantic. Thank you. But I mean it in the old-fashioned sense. Like I dream of meeting a really great girl, and we start dating, really get to know each other until I, I know she's the one, right? And then I finally work up the courage to ask her dad how much money he'll give me to leave town and never contact her again. Thank you. You know, we joke around a lot here in Nottingham, but I want to get serious for a second. I'm lucky enough to have found someone to spend, I don't know, next couple weeks with. But I want everyone here to find someone to spend hopefully the rest of their lives with. So I've taken the liberty of writing some pickup lines for all of you to try. And these are Thank you. These are pickup lines that'll work whether you're a man or a woman or however you identify, whoever you're looking for, whatever situation you're looking for. These pickup lines are absolutely flawless. They work 
100% of the time. The only thing, the only thing is they will, these are pickup lines that will only work right here and not around. Yeah. So before I continue, is there anyone here tonight who does not live in Nagano? <laughs> Nothing to be proud of. Where are some of the places? Grimsby? Tigby? Northampton? <laughs> You know, when I was a kid growing up in Cleveland, Ohio, thank you. My dad used to take me and my siblings to Northampton here in the East Midlands every weekend. It was exhausting, but I wouldn't trade it for anything. Anyway, my name is Dave Hill, and I, I can already tell this is going to be a crazy night. It's nice, it's going to be so crazy, I don't even know if I'm going to use my CPAP machine later. Anyway, the. But anyway, look, from Leicester. Grimsby, Digby, Northampton, wherever. Wherever you're from, I, uh, I do have something for These are pickup lines that will only work in Nottingham. I thought it would be nice to have a little music at this point in the show, so okay, I want to bring out Scott and John from the band. Scott and John, are you guys around? Give them a hand. Scott and John. Best rhythm section I could find at 4.30 this afternoon. All right, I'm going to play a little groove, see if you guys can keep up. doesn't mean you get to do cool stuff. Just because you brought all your drums doesn't mean you have to play all your drums. Fucking nightmare already. John, I don't remember saying anything about taking it for a walk either. Just lay it down. Once again, if you're just joining us, these are pickup lines that will only work right here in Nottingham. First one. Are you the Nottingham City Transport Bus Line? Because I would like to ride you entirely free of charge. Give yourselves a hand. Once again, if you're just joining us, these are pickup lines that will only work in Nottingham. Next one. Are you the Strathton Hotel? 
located at 44 Derby Road, Nottingham. NG1 5FD because I would like to explore your insides after years of abandonment. Worst 40 pounds I ever spent. Alright, once again, if you're. Ah, oh, fuck it. Next one. Are you the number 40 bus making stops between Edwards Lane Estate and City Hospital via Sherwood? Because I heard that contrary to popular opinion, you actually come quite frequently. going fucking amazingly well. But even so, I want to take things to the next level. Give the finger to that level. And then keep on going to the next level after that. So I have to ask, is there a recorder player in the house? Is there a recorder player anywhere? Is that, who's that? Is that Kyle? Oh, you played the recorder? Uh, uh, what's that? You played the recorder? Yeah, but you don't need a recorder, do you? That's... Yeah, yeah, I, I was just saying how oh, I wanted a recorder player. It's so weird. I brought one, I brought one. I had no idea. We've been spending every day together. I didn't until... Listen. What do you want me to do? Just play, you know, just feel it. Just feel it. Lay it down. Just give me a little something. Give me a little taste. a picture with notes. All right, that's enough, that's enough. I mean, for now, for now. No, no, don't leave, don't leave. Kyle, stay. All right. This next pickup line. Little work in Grimsby, Digsby, Leicester, Northampton, Birmingham, uh, maybe not permanent. All right, calm down. <laughs> We're pretty much anywhere in the world, but I think it's especially effective right here in Nottingham. Here we go. Are you Starbucks? Because I'm about to destroy your bathroom. Some of you get that on the way home. Take it, Kyle. Take it.
No, Kyle, don't go. No. Let's go. We just got one. I just want to do like 40 or 50 more. Do 40 or 50 more. <laughs> Now I'm just gonna do one more because I got shit to do. This one's again a pickup line that'll only work right here in Nottingham. Are you Nottingham train station? Because I would like to pass out inside you. and eventually wake up in Leicester. Best five pounds I ever spent. <laughs> Some of you know this about me. I formed my own street gang recently. Thank you. A lot of people hear that and they're like, Dave, you're a middle-aged man, why would you form a street gang? That's because society is in my jail, motherfuckers. <laughs> Name of my street gang is the dangerous snakes who hate bullshit. A lot of people hear that, they're like, Dave, what do you mean by bullshit? I'm like, why don't you ask me what I don't mean by bullshit? Then it'll take me a lot less time to answer. Before we go any further, I wanted to read to you from my street gang, the dangerous snakes who hate bullshit, from our list of grievances. At the top of that list, at the top of that list, there's people who talk on their phone like they're eating a Pop-Tart. I know some of you motherfuckers are here tonight. Actually, that's the only thing on the list. Anyway, if you want to get a gang member patch, join my street gang. I got stuff at the merch booth. I also got t-shirts and stickers for sale. Very attractive. I, but I don't even like to bring up merch at all, you know? Because I'm an artist first and foremost. I don't, I don't care about money one bit. I mean, obviously, this wouldn't be the act, right? You know. But my dad said if I came home from the spicy meatball tour with any leftover merch, he wouldn't let me crash at his place any longer. So if even just a few of you, just half of you, bought a t-shirt of mine tonight, I'd be set with my, my dad at least until the end of May. So thank you very much. And I'll be out, I'll be out there in the changeover signing butts, balls, pretty much anything that'll hold still, sign t-shirts, wherever the fuck. Well, I want to leave you with this. I got my first fist fight recently. Thank you. My very first fist fight. Thank you. And I know a lot of people hear that and they're like, Dave, I don't believe that for one second. You obviously came out of the womb swinging. But it's true. I've never been in a fight and then it happened recently and I was surprised that it happened. So I figured, I was too old to be in a fight, you know? I figured if I'd made it this far in life without being in a fist fight, you know, it just wasn't gonna happen, right? Cause you gotta figure, if you're gonna get in a fist fight, that's, the, you know, that's the sort of thing that happened in your, in your teens or your 20s or whatever, but if you make it to your 40s and you still haven't been in a fist fight, you know, it's pretty safe to say it's not gonna happen, right? You know, I've been in my 40s for a really, really long time now. At least 10 years. Then it happened recently, and I wrote a little song about it. It's a true story. It goes a little something like this.
my girlfriend and I went to visit family back in Cleveland, the Paris of Northeastern Ohio. Beautiful this time of year, it's kind of like a sexy Detroit. And when we got there, my girlfriend's sister asked if we'd have dinner with her and her boyfriend. My girlfriend's sister's boyfriend is a fucking asshole. I could tell you all about him, but I think one detail that would give you a sense of who he is just to let you know that he paid $1,000 for Nickelback tickets. Not to drag Nickelback into things, they seem like nice guys, but at the same time, I think you know what I mean. He's a COVID denier. I didn't want to go to dinner, but I'm at the point of my life where I'm trying to accept the things I cannot change. Including going to dinner with fucking assholes And so we went to the restaurant It was an Italian restaurant where all the food tastes like it was made by a fucking 12 year old And when we got there, my girlfriend's sister's boyfriend was already wasted So I drank two martinis as fast as I could Just to level the playing field And it totally worked I started to relax, which is when I did something amazingly cool That's right, I gave him one of my mozzarella sticks. I know who does that. What am I, fucking Gandhi or Oprah Winfrey? And then we finished in our record time. My girlfriend said, oh my God, this was so fun, but we gotta get going and let the dog out before she pisses all over mom's kitchen. I forgot to tell you guys, we brought our dog with us on the trip. She's a rescue. Thank you. It's true, she's a rescue, but I gotta admit, most days, I'm not sure if I rescued her, or she rescued me, I'm just kidding, they were gonna kill her, so it was definitely me who did the rescuing. House anyway, and I drank an entire bottle of wine all by myself because I was in fucking hell. But then it got kind of cool. My girlfriend's sister's boyfriend put on Iron Maiden, and I love Iron Maiden. But then he started singing along with the Iron Maiden record even louder than Iron Maiden, and he can't sing at all. He's all like, Rock to nails. It was horrible. And I wanted to do that joke where you say, Hey, who sings this song? And he goes, Iron Maiden. And I'd be like, Yeah. Let's keep it that way. Burn. But I didn't, because I'm such a nice guy. He kept on singing for like 45 minutes straight until my girlfriend couldn't take it any longer. And she said one more time, we really got to get going and let the dog out before she pisses all over mom's kitchen. And that's when my girlfriend says his boyfriend started screaming at us at the top of his lungs and throwing shit all over the place. He was completely unhinged. This went on for like two minutes until I'd had enough. And I stood up and I said to him, Shut the fuck up right now, or I'll destroy you. I should probably tell you I was wearing a brooch at the time. It didn't have the de-escalating properties I had hoped. In fact, it only seemed to make it matter. So I said one more time, shut the fuck up right now, or I'll destroy you. And at this point of the story, he's standing behind his stupid little basement mini bar that guys like that always seem to have. So I grabbed a bar stool and I threw it to the ground. At the time, it seemed like it was in a cool West movie sort of way. But now that I think about it, it was more like, <sighs> I've had it. I shall take my leave, and then I headed for the door. And that's when my girlfriend's sister's boyfriend attacked me from behind and started punching me in the back of the head like he was being paid to do it. And I'd never been punched before, and I thought, oh my god, this is so annoying. I should ask him to stop. So I turned around and asked him to stop, and that's when he started punching me in the face and in the neck and in the chest. And like I said, I'd never been in a fight before, and I thought to myself, so far, this has been a largely negative experience. I should end it, but I didn't want to hurt my hands because I'm an artist. That's when something came over me and I picked them up all at once and I threw them to the ground. I was like,
like, oh my god, this is so much easier than I thought. And then I jumped down, I'm like, hey kitty cat, and then I started lightly strangling him. I don't know if you've ever strangled someone before, but if you have, you know there's that point where you can see the light slowly draining from their eyes, and you think to yourself, I might be the messiah. <laughs> it's at that point that my girlfriend came over and said, bring it up, bring it up. Fights over and I said, yeah, I know, maybe I totally won, let's get out of here. She drove us home, I sat in the passenger seat, basically undefeated as far as fights go. I never lost a fucking fight in my life. And every stoplight, I'm looking at the people in their cars, and I'm like, what's up, motherfucker, you want a piece of this? Yes, including old ladies. And when I woke up in the morning, I figured I should take a shower and watch the taint of the fight off myself. And I figured I should also wash my clothes too. And that's when I realized My brooch was missing Yeah I lost my brooch in a fist fight Not a lot of people can say that But on the plus side I ruined my girlfriend's family Like I'm here a whole lot more after that Cause they hate the fucking asshole too There was a family party And everyone was but what was even cooler is they seem kind of afraid. It's nice to be liked, but it's amazing to be feared. One, two.